well this is the second of my review videos from the weekend but it's also the one that has been so far the longest in the making because Premier League is still playing so you get Premier League and Eredivisie uh, you know with a day's delay more or less because um, Monday night games and uh, this section here La Liga, Liga Nosh and I added uh, Ligue 1 and I'll tell you about the reason in a sec will also come next week. There are quite some Monday night games that we have to consider. But yeah, it has been a long time in the making because we had one huge game that I just needed to digest everything on. And the game happened, of course, in Paris. And fortunately, at the same time, there was a game in Valencia that allowed me to wear this Valencia jersey. If that wouldn't have happened, since none of the other teams uh, have been playing here, I would have known, not known what to wear. Probably I would have gone for the Benfica back there, which brings me to the decision. I made the decision. I did not know where to put Liga. I had Liga A with Serie A and I thought oh, that's going to be really long videos because, you know, when I talk Serie A, I really talk long and it's the same thing with La Liga and, and, and so on. But I watch a lot more Serie A. So I made the call. Serie A will stand this season by itself. Uh, alone and then I said well just by the jerseys I could tag Liga on with the Premier League although I do watch some Premier League too uh, here uh, here and there but in the end it came down to how I have the jerseys it is literally that of Premier League and of Serie A I have the most jerseys and I can easily make an entire wall as you will see my Premier League um, I probably could fill the wall with just Premier League jerseys I will reserve some space for my Ajax jerseys um, Serie A, absolutely no problem. I will not run out. Uh, and so I realized, yeah, I don't have that many La Liga teams. Five to be exact, and that Sevilla one is a fake. I keep repeating it because it bugs me so much. I need to get a legit Sevilla jersey. Uh, unfortunately, the new ones are not very enticing, but let's, that's a, a story for different time then yeah I have my three PSG jerseys which fill up and then I have the Benfica jersey so yeah there's the wall I made a promise to myself that um, the first order for the rest of this year uh, now birthday that's coming up aside and potentially um, Christmas where I want to get jerseys that I really really like uh, and but the if I buy jerseys I will fill up on league R. Uh, uh, I need a Lyon, I need a Marseille, I really would like to have Nantes and probably Bordeaux. Those are four right off the bat that I would make great additions to, to this wall and then, you know, I can switch around a little bit. So yeah, this background, as you see the wall behind me, I managed to at least uh, six here. <laughs> uh, one team and then uh, I'm um, doubling up with the champions. I've uh, decided to put the champion. No, Benfica is not even a champion. <laughs> I need Porto too. I also made that promise to 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 myself. But I decided to keep three up and then fill up down with the other Spanish teams that I have. So that's why you get Barcelona just behind me. And then yeah, the two champions and because they are two recent nice additions, I really wanted to put back there. Those jerseys are really some of the best from last season. It has to be said. And then yeah, Barcelona, PSG, a little bit Real Madrid. I'm wearing Valencia. Um, I watched a few highlights. I watched some La Liga. I watched uh, actually quite some League, uh, especially the big clash that will be talked talk about. And then at the end, um, so I'm gonna talk about this, and then at the end we're gonna talk um, a little bit about the season in Portugal that's about to start. But let's start in La Liga actually had a very slow start and I said uh, the entire weekend there yeah, were not that many great games maybe the last one that was ha happening started with a goal that's drop between Eva and Celta Granada oh, very weird jerseys uh, looking forward to review them um, against Bilbao was a timid game uh, as boring almost as the jerseys in, in a way and Granada ends up winning it uh, kind of in the second half because they were then the team that a little bit uh, got better. Also, as, as we said, there were many COVID cases with Bilbao, so that might have be, uh, contributed. Didn't say anything of Cadiz or Sasuna. Real Betis got a deserved but very late victory against Al Alaves. They had already hit twice the Woodwork, but Alaves also had a, a pretty big chance. 
Well, the lead against Real Sociedad was actually quite an interesting game where Real Sociedad uh, first a little bit better, but then via the lead um, got it and wonderful goal by uh, Michel, especially assist by uh, Sergi, Sergi Guardiola. Guardiola, it's not the, he's not related to uh, Guardiola, the coach. But that was a really great, great assist. Uh, but then Real Sociedad gets back back in the game, tried a ridiculous corner uh, var variant, uh, reminiscent of what England did, but back then they had only four or five. There were eight players li lined up and the Vitaly players didn't know. It caused kind of a uh, big scuffle there in the box. Uh, nothing came, came for it, but a little bit later from a free kick with the Arconada um, a memorial performance, Lopez by the goalkeeper Lopez scores the equalizer and basically that settles the game. I think everyone was happy with that. Uh, Villarreal, kind of a disappointing draw against Huesca, has to be said. Uh, you what you were expecting a lot from Villarreal, but not to be. Uh, one thing, Rasa that David Silva did not play yet. I think this was why everyone was kind of looking forward to uh, watch Real Sociedad. Uh, Wesker actually took Cuclito, although Villarreal, uh, Gerardo Moreno had already some chances, but Wesker hung in there, gets the goal, leads at the halftime, it's a Gerardo Moreno penalty that gives uh, Villarreal the equalizer. They cannot find much more, there were the chances there, but Wesker, promoted team, gets a very uh, important uh, away draw. And then the crazy game, Valencia against Levante. Um, I saw a little bit. Uh, because I had it on at, 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 at the same time, but only from the second half. First half, I didn't see much on NFL. And now I can only watch the zone, unless I do some creative stuff, I can only watch it on two devices, so uh, that limits me if I have a computer and TV. Valencia losing so many great players, uh, but still feeling a kind of young squad, but defensively they're not present. Morales already in the first minute, 28 seconds in horrible pass and then Morales just slaloms through the defense and makes it 1-0. Uh, a little bit so surprising, the um, response came from Valencia who headed in through Gabriel, I think it was a leg leaking corner if I was not uh, mistaken, where the goalie didn't look all, all that well. However, Levante who had never won at Valencia really we need to get this is our big big chance um a goal by malero uh, uh by malero was disallowed because in the build-up there was a hand handball but this showed all the frailties in defense that valencia will have and it's gonna be a long season for valencia unless they pull it together that was in 2020 in the 36 though uh there was no denying morales a wonderful shot in the up near corner exactly in the exactly in the corner exactly in the corner this wonderful goal, but again, a few minutes later, Gomez gets the equalizer for Valencia. So uh, Levante really, really disappointed to only get a draw, and it doesn't get better. Levante actually got worse and worse, and the longer the game went on, especially when um, Cherishev came off for Gedesh, uh, suddenly the game was really tilting Valencia's way, and Cherishev and Vallejo had already a big chance, then they combined, Vallejo also can't get him on. Uh, then they combine to make it 3-2, uh, Vallejo really sidestep around, around the final, putting it nicely in. In stoppage time, uh, Vallejo adds another one, it is 4-2, Valencia, a uh, kind of unexpected win. This sets up now the following, first table, Valencia is top of the table, believe it or not. Uh, as, it's, as you see, goal average is rather low on the first day. Wasn't. Uh, was not the most exciting of stars, but you know, maybe the Heat had also something to play and that the big boys have not been playing. So uh, we cannot really, I have the table, the, 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 the table here, you see all the big boys have not been playing and this is where all the percentages are. Uh, we have now a good reading on who is going to be uh, relegated and the Cadiz is in there, Elche is there, Alaves is there, Huesca is in there. So three per promoted teams and Alaves more or less. And I'm a little bit concerned that Bilbao is also in there. So let's see that. Um, on the weekend, don't get too excited that you see Bilbao Barcelona. That is on 6th of January. I'm sorry, this would be the standard tie here. Uh, but at least we get Real Madrid playing at Real Sociedad. That's a 
really interesting, especially David Silva makes his debut. Uh, that is Sunday late, uh, I think Saturday late, Celta Vigo against Valencia. The guy could be something in there. Uh, other than that, um, uh, I'm struggling a little bit. I'm mean, USK Cadiz with two promoted teams. I'm struggling a little bit. Also, this is n right now, this is Monday evening. Uh, the schedule keeps changing on me uh, frequently. I hope this is still valid when uh, the weekend comes. Let's go to Liga. Uh, first of all, with a makeup game between Lance and PSG, where PSG, I had it in the preview vi video in the middle of the week in there, uh, where PSG filled the second string squad and Lance took full advantage of that to get a 1 0 win. Although PSG had the chance, they, they did not play all that badly, but in, 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 in the end, you know, if you C string team, you know, PSG with many COVID cases, and I think still on the weekend we had uh, the likes of. Uh, Icardi out, Mbappé was out, um, uh, Marquinhos was out, and of course uh, the goalie whose name I don't, uh, Navas was also out. So uh, that set PSG up to a bad start to the season already. Um, then I saw a little bit while I was watching else between Girondin and Bordeaux and Lyonnais, uh, Olympique Lyonnais. Um, I don't want to say it was a great game, it was kind of... Uh, Odd a little bit to watch because uh, you know the last game and the um, uh, Bordeaux Lyon game they had similar colors you know kind of purplish dark blue against white but in the last game I wanted to have the white to win in the other one I was more for Bordeaux and then they were playing in opposite direction it was a whole mess for me to follow that, that one but I had the feeling it was not all that great of a game and ended in nil nil Montpellier with a dominant performance against Nice. Um, pulls out a 3-1 win uh, against the league leaders at the time um, and also as we said they were 3-0 up there was only a late goal and uh, the Congrès I think they were uh, scoring, scoring twice with one uh, nice one in there um, Saint Etienne or Strasbourg 2-0, Lille Metz 1-0 didn't see much that Dijon uh, Reims, uh, Angers Reims 1-0 Dijon, Brest, the only reason you need to see this is the second goal by Brest. Uh, Brest pulling out a victory. Um, it was kind of a level game, uh, but Perrault give, gives uh, Brest the lead before the half. Then Asale with, yeah, it was a clumsy tackle with outstretched foot. It is a red card by the rules. I can see why he was a little bit upset with that, but you know, you gotta be a little bit more careful there. And that kind of sets the tone of the game. But uh, the stoppage time goal by Cardona, Perro with a cross in, and he uh, Karata kicks it into internet. Watch it. Wonderful, wonderful goal uh, for the, uh, the Bretons. Uh, Lorient lost two three. The two promoted sides. Uh, that will that is a big win for Lance, who get two in a row. Um, Ren, I should have watched the Hells and against Nim, especially since I'm interested in all the new Nim. Nim is a 4 to win. Ren, really? Kamavinga, Kamavinga, I think uh, will be an interesting proposition for the Champions League. I saw Hells of Monaco against Nantes. And um, yeah, Nantes gets a rather lucky equal, but it was mostly Mon Monaco uh, that uh, dominated that game and uh, they get the uh, first goal to three up already in the fifth minute a uh, goal for not was disallowed in the first a uh, half for offside rightly so and not var was working there uh blast out of nowhere gets the goal and the equal as i said but uh Goebbels just a few minutes later makes it 2-1 uh everyone in germany was of course looking at uh, how need nick Kovic and bella and folland are doing well in monaco so monaco also getting a win but everything, everything starts and stops with the explosive classic in Paris. Um, first of all, uh, PSG fielded a decent squad. I mean, there was Neymar in there, there was Di Maria in there. There was so much bad blood in the game and from the get-go you could see there was fire in the PSG squad who really wanted to attack um, Marseille as much as it could and already the second chance, a uh, second minute um, of Florenzi Verratti combined uh, for a huge chance for PSG uh, where then afterwards it could have been a handball given but in Italy and Spain for sure it would have been given um, but it already set the tone for the match. The referee, honestly with all the poisons going on 
that referee was the weakest link on the entire field. I've never seen a referee so out of source making bad decisions, never being able to calm the game, um, being very lenient with yellow cards at first. Um, and you should have sent off someone rather early on, to be honest. Uh, there is no quick question about it. Neymar, um, Marseille got under the skin of Neymar. It was really, when the few moments where PSG could concentrate, they were actually playing great. However, Marseille got under the skin, especially uh, Alvaro. Uh, Spanish defender and Payet, um, the as you say, one of the two, two stars of OM. Uh, there was another good chance by Neymar in the first half, and you know it kind of. I really saw that uh, Marseille is getting under the skin, and then with the one, they had a, a, a promising attack before, but with the one chance, there was a free kick from Payet where the whole PSG defense is caught sleeping and even the goalkeeper does, does go on to where has no problem putting it into net in the third, 30th minute or 31st minute. It was pretty much a strike of 30 uh, minutes played. But uh, from that moment on, then there were already a few uh, scuffles uh, before, but the game then descended into madness. There was every opportunity that the two got, they were getting at each other. And from what I hear, uh, at first, is uh, the whole heat came in because uh, Payet or Paul Public kind of said, "Yeah, I was happy that PSG lost in the Champ Champions League final, which of course doesn't sit well with the Parisian players that you're so um, open about it." And yeah, they really exacted revenge on them. Then um, too ugly. It was towards the end of the first half. Two really ugly scenes in short succession with no pun punishment. First, um, Alvaro who is abusing Neymar potentially racially, but in the same sequence, Di Maria is clear, who was with COVID, is spitting towards Alvaro. You cannot really see the direction of whatever is going, but you can clearly see that there was some moisture coming. So those two actions, uh, Neymar was adamant that he has been racially abused, that he's been called a monkey and other things. Although I'm not sure the way he went about it was the smartest thing, because if it really was gold, go to the ref and tell him and not just, ah, racista, racista, and whatever. Um, if both are true, both should be punished severely. I don't think we have to talk about that. Uh, there was also then, I think, uh, Gaye got a, a yellow card for just tripping up. I think it was Verratti, just grabbing him by the feet. I mean, it was, I've never seen in a long time. And I shouldn't say I've never seen I've saw, I've seen some ugly classicals and so on. But it's been a long time that I saw such an ugly game between two teams that were just in it for the fight. Um, in the second half, the teams calmed down a little bit at first and PSG had chances. And again, when PSG was concentrating on playing, they actually were the more active team. The problem is they did not concentrate too much on that and Marseille stood solid in defense, kept them coming and frustrated them the, to the core. Uh, great credit needs, needs to go to Andrew Villas-Boas, who, you know, Marseille is not the richest team in France and, and anymore, they do have their troubles. So uh, building from makeshift squad kind of, not, not really makeshift, but you know, he doesn't get the best pieces, a really solid, solid squad, that's a big, big, big task. And he's doing a good job at that. Uh, I think the whole thing took another level. Benedetto came on and then even scored a goal that was disallowed when every review said showed that this was not offside. They look at it on VAR, they don't give it. Before that, Di Maria's goal was um, was rightly not given for offside. Neymar had a big chance where he is sliding into Areola. That descended into madness. And yeah. It was not helping that then Paredes came, came on, who is already a very uh, fiery defender. The whole thing, I was, I think they were given 12, at one point, 12 yellow cards just before stoppage time, which was already a French league record. But what happened then in stoppage time, it just needed a little bit of spark and exploded. There was, uh, I think, Benedetto and Paredes, uh, crashed into each other and then kind of um, shoved each other a little bit and that said oh, everything of Amavi and Kurosawa with a proper MMA fight in the background 
everyone going Neymar also giving uh, who already had an argument with Alvaro uh, we had such a leg gave, gave him another another one and so within <laughs> in two minutes I mean this was one action the referee hands out two red cards for Amavi and Kursava he ends heads out two yellows and then two reds for Benedetto and Paredes and by VAR Neymar gets sent off because of the tap an absolute disgrace on every 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 corner how must say went in I mean if the I said if the racial abuse was there needs to be punished the spitting of Di Maria needs to be punished the referee should not see a game ever again he was the worst man on the field because he never never got a handle on this game never and he made mistakes i think um there was also a penalty for psg not given there was a penalty probably for Maceno not given the second goal for Marseille was a good goal uh he should have sent off di maria where they were chasing um uh payette down the pitch where uh at, at one point di, di maria just from Paredes and Di Maria within three minutes foul Payet that uh, he had to be taken off because I think he would have gone to the hospital otherwise. There needs to be a red card card given uh, and just generally calm down again. This was a masterclass in horrific refereeing. It has to be said, this is for me, despite all the bad blood. We know bad blood can happen and especially between PSG and Marseille and yeah, didn't help that there were a few Paris fans there as well, though only 5,000. So yeah, we have some midweek makeup games. We have Montpellier Lyon, which sounds like uh, our Orient Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, PSG gets another round. Maybe they can get the first win this season. They haven't started in oh, since 84, I think, with two losses. And Marseille against Saint Etienne, they should have been the official opener. Also, really good game to start it off. And then on the weekend we get another good one. There's a, another huge clash involving Marseille against Lille. Uh, late, uh, I think also Nantes against Saint-Étienne is a traditional duel. Nice against PSG and Rennes against Monaco. Oh, there's a lot of good stuff in there. Uh, worth watching, I think. I will stay a little bit with League uh, despite all the fighting, but that League is not a bad League, so I need to give it a lot more love and I will hopefully show this in jerseys as well. Uh, current standings uh, here now uh, we have uh, Ren is now in the lead now this table says already a little a little bit more um, uh, together with Monaco and Lille so those are the two best teams it's still not like, very uneven because you know Marseille and Etienne need to play PSG has a game uh, less but we see PSG down 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 this is not the usual way they're still heavily favored to win it all so it's kind of looks still a little bit weird very brief for Portugal. Um, I predict a two-way race. <laughs> that was not surprising. I'm really curious. Benfica made tremendous investments. Uh, Porto lost a few good players, but it uh, will be interesting to see those two giants fighting. As you can see, Braga and Sporting are only giving outsider chances even into the Champions League. It's really Porto and Benfica will fight for those spots. Relegation battle, not there, but uh, Belenenges, read up on it, a uh, sad, sad story in many ways in there. Uh, it's the favorite, it's the favorite to be relegated. Anyway, uh, yeah, and here is the first round. It starts with Famalicao against Benfica. Um, kind of an interesting game to start, start off. Porto starts against Braga, that's a huge derby. That's probably the best game in this round. Other than that, I think it's rather even sporting against Gil Vicente to get the big falling. Now, I can close. Please let, let me know what you thought about any of the games that I've been talking about. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I really want to hear if you saw uh, PSG against Marseille, what you thought about it. It was just nuts, but it was a must watch. I absolutely have to say that. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel, as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!